Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian, I'm Ian the Reader, and today is my birthday. That's right, 26 years ago, I came into this world. You're welcome. Really quickly before we jump in though, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who has been a part of my booktube journey so far. I know this isn't like my channel's birthday and I'll talk more about all of my emotions involving booktube in that video when that time comes, but it has just been such a blessing to me this year of life to get to join booktube in this capacity. I've watched booktube for a long, long Long time like almost 10 years but it's been on my mind and something that I've wanted to do to make content on booktube for years and I finally worked up the courage and the reception from people has just been so warm and so loving and so welcoming I could not ask for a better community of people to get to talk about amazing books with like not only do I love books but I just love talking about these books with amazing people. So I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much for watching this video, watching any of my videos, leaving comments, things like that. It means the world to me and I appreciate it so much. So today I am excited to be making a video that I have been thinking about and planning and revising and editing for a number of weeks, even like months to be honest. This is a video that I have planned and I'm ready to talk about. Rather than doing like a typical like birthday book tag or whatever, I thought it'd be really fun to do a 30 books to read before I'm 30 challenge for myself. Self. So as of today, I am 26 years old. So that means I have four years until I am 30 years old, which is more than enough time to read 30 books. I read like 30 books in a few months. That being said, the selection that I have chosen for myself are books that I've been putting off for a long time, books that I feel like I should have read already, books that are humongous and intimidating, but I definitely want to have read. There are some intense books on this list. There are some exciting books on this list, and I'm super hyped to be talking to you guys about all of those books today. Before we jump into the video, it would mean the world to me if you would like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. It's my birthday, guys. Come on, subscribe. Unfortunately for you and for me, I guess, there is no method to this madness. I have not divided this into genres or like time periods or anything like that. I have a giant stack of books right here and then I have a list of like ebooks or audiobooks that I have that I need to get to as well. And we're just gonna roll with it. So without further ado, these are the 30 books that I want to read before I turn 30. First up, we have The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien. So this is an author that has kind of flown under the radar. I feel like a lot of people don't know who he is. He wrote this trilogy called uh, The Lord of the Rings. That's what it was. Yeah, and I just, I feel like he needs more attention from me personally because nobody else is reading his books. So I definitely want to pick up The Silmarillion because I loved The Lord of the Rings. I love The Hobbit and I don't feel like I can truly be a Tolkien fan. Maybe not, maybe that's a little bit harsh, but I feel like I want to be a more faithful Tolkien fan and read The Silmarillion and see what I'm missing out on. Sticking with fantasy, next we have The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. Now, to be honest, I have been very hesitant to pick up The Wheel of Time. I know that it is a lot of people's favorite series ever, and I think that's awesome, but for this to be like such a long series and even like diehard fans of the series admit that there's like a slog to get through in this series, like, I don't know if I'm down for that. Like, why read a series that has a slog in it when I could just read other series that don't have a slog in it? But I gotta at least like have an opinion on these books. So at the very least, I wanna read the first book before I'm 30 years old. Next up is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. I've been wanting to read more Dickens. This book seems really good. I've actually read like the first 100 pages of this or something like that, but it is freaking humongous. So it's gonna take me a long time. I definitely need to get back into this though and I will absolutely read it before I'm 30. Maybe before I'm like, 26 and a half even, we'll see what happens. Then we have The Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. I've heard that this is like kind of a modern fantasy, but like also classic fantasy, kind of like mashup, a little bit reminiscent of The Lord of the Rings, and I'm down for that. I've heard so many good things about this book. It has been sitting on my shelf being like, Ian, read me, please. So I want to read it. I think book two is supposed to come out at some point in the near-ish future too, so I definitely want to read it before then. Next up is a short story collection that I have two copies of and have read none of, and that is The Collected, or no, it's just called The Stories of Vladimir Nabokov, who wrote Lolita, but I don't really have any interest in Lolita. That being said, I've heard that this collection of stories, this collection of short stories is magical and impressive and amazing. And I want to know what's going on. And like I said, I have two copies. I have this one that I picked up at a bookstore in like Seattle, I think. Um, and then I have a hardback laminated or whatever, like it's wrapped in plastic. I don't know what that's called. I have a hardback beautiful edition of it as well, but I haven't read either. So I definitely need 
need to pick up this collection. Next is one that I'm super ashamed that I haven't read already because it is actually the first advanced reader copy that I ever had before I even like made booktube videos or did book uh, reviews on Instagram. The publisher messaged me on Goodreads and asked if I wanted a copy of this and I was like, heck yeah, I do. I really want to read this and then I totally didn't read it. That book is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky, or however you say his name. He is the author of The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which is a fantastic young adult book. If you haven't read it yet, go read it now. It's amazing. Uh, but this is like totally different from that. It is like a super long horror novel, like kind of in the same vein of Stephen King. And I really enjoyed what I did read of it, but for some reason I just didn't continue reading it at that time. And now it's been like three years and I'm a terrible person. So I definitely want to read this before I'm 30 because I should have read it by the time I was like 23. Then we have another underhyped author and that is Brandon Sanderson with Warbreaker. Brandon Sanderson has written a few other books you may have heard of or may not have heard of, but Warbreaker is one that I definitely want to have an opinion on. I've read some of his series like Stormlight Archives and Mistborn, but Warbreaker Warbreaker, I don't know what's going on here and I need to know. So very excited about this. Also love this cover. I feel like I can be a real Sanderson fan because I have the cool UK covers and I'm happy about that. Then we have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safan or something like that. I hope I said it right. I tried. Uh, the Shadow of the Wind is like a magical realism, historical fiction kind of book. There are numerous books in this series, I believe, but I think a lot of people have just read this book as well and think that it's amazing and beautiful and I wanna read it. It's a translated work. I've heard a lot of good things about it. It revolves around like books as well, which is always super cool. And I just think I'm gonna love this book. So definitely need to get to it. I'm pretty sure also that good old tall guy reads, Alex uh, loves this book as well. And even like the series. So if you haven't followed him or like subscribed to his channel, I mean, you probably have because he has like a thousand subscribers. And if you're watching me, you should totally be watching him, but I'll link his channel down below. He is awesome. Then we have A Touch of Light by Tiago Abdallah. I actually just got this in the mail. I won it in a giveaway on Patrick Ryan's channel who I'll link down below. But I've heard so many good things about this from some dear friends of mine here on booktube and I want to read it. I'm super excited. This is going to happen soon, maybe even this month, but uh, I'm putting it on this list so I can check off that box when I get to it. Next up, we have White Noise by Don DeLillo. This is supposed to be like one of the contenders for the great American novel. Have not read a lot of DeLillo. I've read one very short novella of his that I did not like at all, but this is like one of his most popular works. I think it's also being turned into a movie with Adam Driver in it and Adam Driver is dope. So I definitely want to watch that and definitely want to read this book. I also like this Penguin edition. I think it's super cool with a lot of cool graphics on there. And I love deckled edges too. So that's exciting, but I'm not reading it because it looks pretty. I'm reading it because I want to know what's going on here. Then we have another classic with Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, which I'm going to be reading soon because it is one of my Q3 five-star predictions. This is like one of those books that I feel like every English major is supposed to read before like getting into college. And like, if they knew I hadn't read it, they probably would have been like, dude, you're a faker. Get out of here. So I need to uh, read this. They're going to come take my degree away if I don't. So it's got to happen. Next, we have a sci-fi classic that I'm intimidated by, and that's Dune by Frank Herbert. I mean, you've heard of this one probably as well. So uh, yeah, Dune is like the science fiction classic, I feel like in a lot of ways. And obviously it had that amazing adaptation back in 2021 and part two is coming pretty soon-ish, like in the next two or three years before I'm 30. So I definitely need to read this so I know how the story ends before I get there. Yeah, I mean, I I've tried before and I just need to try and enjoy endure and love it. That's the plan at least. Next is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have read Never Let Me Go by this author and it broke me a little bit. And so I'm ready to be broken again. I've had time to recover, to heal, to process, and I'm ready for more damage emotionally. So yes, this should be good. Then we have the only book by Donna Tart I have not read yet, and that is The Little Friend. This is a terrible cover. Like maybe that's why I haven't read this yet because the cover is just like, hello. I don't like that. I don't like it one bit, but I do like Donna Tartt's writing. The Secret History and The Goldfinch were both amazing five-star reads for me when I read them back in 2019, I think. And I've been meaning to read this book ever since and it keeps not happening. So if this, if, if, if 2022 ends and I haven't read this book, like somebody needs to come and delete my booktube account and uh, burn all my books. I mean, that's dramatic, but I really need to read this book. Speaking of books I totally should have read already, <laughs> Malice by John Gwynn. This book has been on my TBR for a good minute and it was one of my uh, family book club's book 
reads that we were all supposed to read together back in 2020 or 2021. And I didn't read it, even though I'm the one who selected it because I'm a terrible person. What else can I say? I love John Gwynn's other series, The Shadow of the Gods or whatever the heck it's called. And I need to read Malice. I have the entire four book Faithful and the, and the Fallen series or whatever the heck it's called. They're just sitting on my bookshelf judging me being like, you suck. I swear I'm not trying to just like emotionally beat myself up in this video. It just keeps happening because all these books are ones I should have read already. I'm gonna stop judging myself from this point going forward. Then we have Rules of Civility by, man, I always butcher this guy's name, Amor Towels or Tole. I don't know how you say it. It's okay. I read his books and I love them. That's enough, right? Um, Rules of Civility is the only book by this author that I haven't read. I gave A Gentleman in Moscow five stars. I gave The Lincoln Highway five stars. This is his debut novel and I know I'm gonna give it five stars. If I don't, I will riot in the streets against myself. Then we have Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. I read The Bluest Eye back in 2020 and I loved it and I hated it because it hurt so much, but I loved it so much. And I've been wanting to pick up another Morrison. Actually, I have picked up another Morrison book. Last year I read Beloved. I liked it. I didn't love it as much as The Bluest Eye, but I think that this one could definitely be a five stars. I'm super hyped about it. Then we have another one of those classics that I definitely should have read already. And that is 1984 by George Orwell. This is one that I feel like everybody read in high school, but me, like, I don't know if I I just like had sick days on all the days everybody was reading it. I mean, that didn't happen, but I should have read it already. I don't know. My high school failed me. That's what it is. It's their fault, not mine. But I definitely need to read 1984. I found this old copy at a garage sale and I was like, this might be a first edition. It wasn't a first edition, but it's old and cool. I like that and I need to read this book. We have three more physical books to talk about. Then we're going to jump into the ebooks that I need to read or get physical copies of. The first of the last physical books to talk about though is Don Quixote by Miguel de Cervantes. This is like another one of those like classic classics that everybody should read. It's considered like one of the greatest books of all time. And I wanna know what's going on here. I've heard that it's great and like a classic for a reason. And it's also funny and I like funny classics. So I'm hyped. Speaking of classics that I totally wanna read really, 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 really bad. We have The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. I really wanna read this book. It was my high school senior English teacher's favorite book of all time and it has been solidly on my radar since then. I've seen a movie adaptation of this and I remember loving it, but I don't remember anything that happened. So I will avoid watching it again until I have read this gigantic tome. This is intimidatingly long, but I like that. Ooh, speaking of long books, we have Under the Dome by Stephen King. We couldn't have this list without having a Stephen King book on it. I feel like this is one that people either love or hate and I wanna love it. So I think I will. I'm just gonna manifest that. I'm gonna manifest loving all of these books and then I totally will. This is another chunker though. I don't know when this is gonna happen. I mean, I have a lot of Stephen King books that I wanna read. When do I wanna read this one? by the time I'm 30, so that's all that matters. Okay, so that's like a lot of the books, but now I just need to talk about a few books that I don't have physical copies of, or at least don't have physical copies of yet, that will bring us to 30. First of those is The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I actually do have a physical copy of this, but I have, okay, my bookshelves are really small and I have a lot of books in case you hadn't noticed. Um, and I, so I have turned my books sideways and I start stacking them up rather than side to side. And The Blade Itself is in like a boxed set on the very bottom of a giant stack of books. So I would have to remove all those books and then take it out of the box set and I just didn't want to do it, leave me alone. Uh, but this is like a grim dark fantasy series that obviously I want to read because it's one that people talk about on booktube all the time and I love fantasy. And so I need to read some Joe Abercrombie and it's gonna happen by the time I'm 30. Then we have The Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is another one of those books kind of like similar to The Wheel of Time and The Eye of the World that like I'm scared to read and I don't know if I will love, but at the very least I want to read the first book and I'm pretty sure that Alex and I are actually going to be buddy reading this at some point this year so should knock that off the list at some point soon. Then we have another classic which is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. East of Eden by John Steinbeck is my favorite book of all time and so I definitely want to read The Grapes of Wrath because a lot of people like this one more than East of Eden. Don't see how that's possible but I'm going to read it and hopefully love it. Then we have Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. I've been really wanting to read more Cormac McCarthy. I felt that hype before Jimmy Nuts started talking about him all the time, but ever since he's been talking about him all the time on his channel, I'm like even more obsessed with reading his books. Even though I read one of his books in high school and really didn't like it, I have a feeling as an adult, I'm gonna love his books. And Blood Meridian is like the tip of the top of the tops of his books. I don't know what I'm saying, but it's supposed to be amazing. I really want to read it and uh, it's going to happen. Now let's talk about a few self-pub books that I want to get to in addition to A Touch of Light, which I talked about earlier. First, we have Illborn by Daniel T. Jackson. This book is sitting on my Kindle library 
ready to go. It's calling me. I think this one's gonna happen pretty dang soon. It's just super long, so I haven't prioritized it yet. Then we have The Sword of Kaigen by an author whose name I'm forgetting right now, and I suck because of that, but I'm gonna put it in big letters right here. That way you can see it and look this author up. Uh, but yeah, this is an Asian-inspired fantasy that is supposed to be like spectacular. A lot of people love it. I think Patrick said that it is currently his favorite standalone fantasy book. Link Patrick's channel down below, but you've obviously watched him because he's amazing. Uh, but yeah, I need to read this book because it just sounds so good and I want to love it so much and I think I will. And next we have The Seventh Cadence by Jim Wilborn who has a booktube channel. I'll link him down below. But I'm super excited about reading this book. I actually have a copy of it on the way. So hopefully I will read it probably this summer, maybe. Hopefully that's the plan. And then we have Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I think that's how you say his name. I mean, it's not how you say his name. We all know it's not how you say his name, but I tried and that's all that matters. Um, this book, I actually have two copies of, but I definitely left them somewhere and I need to find them so that I can read them. And uh, I will at some point. So that's cool. And lastly, we have The Three Body Problem, which my goodness, I cannot escape here on booktube. Alex has been hyping it up a ton. Jonathan over at Words and Time has been hyping it up a ton. And I feel like I've seen it in other places too, but them two in particular will not stop talking about it. And they have got me so hyped about starting these books. Like I'm hungry to start this trilogy. I wasn't planning on starting it anytime soon, but they just make it sound so epic and mind blowing. And I love having my freaking mind freaking blown. I'm here for it. It's gonna happen like real soon. That's all of them. Those are all 30, or at least I think they are. If you're really like diligent, you can totally go back and count them to make sure that was all 30. But I'm pretty sure I talked about all 30. I have a list of 30 books here. If I missed one, then I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure I talked about all of them. So that's all that matters. But I am so excited about reading every single one of these books. I'm super hopeful about all of them, that they will be amazing. Five stars, favorites of all time. It's gonna be a really good few years of reading if I actually do read all of these books. Hopefully I will get to all of them in that amount of time. I think going forward on my birthday, I'll do like a yearly check-in to see how many of them I read in that last year. That way I can hopefully hold myself accountable to actually reading all of these. We'll see how it goes though. I think I need to read like, hold on, let's math here for a second. I have four years until I'm 30. So I think that means I need to read like somewhere between like seven or eight of these a year, which is not bad at all. That's like less than one a month. So I can definitely do that. It's gonna happen. I believe in myself. I'm super excited about reading them, so it's gonna happen. But that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think of my 30 books to read before I'm 30. Which ones you think I'll love? Which ones you think I might not love if you've read them? Just tell me what you think about these books. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.